I love color grading. So who of you guys recognized in the intro that I actually did not do a log or flat color profile to normal color conversion, but I actually did the opposite. I flattened out a normally recorded video and desaturated it to achieve this log look and to get this effect. Who recognized that? Just let me know in the comments below and let's get started. So when you're watching this video, I assume that you already do some basic color correction, that you apply LUTs, etc. to make your footage look good. And that's generally a good starting point, but usually that's not enough. Like your footage doesn't come out as professional or cinematic looking as for example, from bigger YouTubers that do it a bit better or from cinema movies even. So here I have three tips to, for you that are actually very easy to apply, but that make a huge difference in your color grading and that instantly make it look a lot more professional. So let's get started with it directly. I prepared three clips here in Final Cut where I can show that to you. So that's the first clip here that I want to show you and that's straight out of camera. It's from the Fujifilm X-T4 and straight out of camera it already looks pretty good but we can definitely make it better. So the first thing I did here was of course my basic color correction. I lowered the midtones a little bit and raised the shadows a bit because the shadows were a bit clipped here like they were below zero. Also made some adjustments to my highlights just to even out the image a bit more to make it look good. And now I come to the actual tip that I want to give you here. And that is basically that you want to create contrast in your image, but not just in the luminance, but also in the saturation and in the color space. So when I apply this hue saturation cursor, you can see what I mean. Here you can clearly see that there's so much more separation between her and the background and even between her and her pullover. So let's see what I did here. First thing that I did is adjusted the U versus U curve. So as you can see before without this effect, her pullover is actually a bit purplish. And as you can see in the vector scope here, these are her skin tones. They are in the orange parts of the image. and this is her pullover like this goes into the purple or bluish parts of the image then we also have a bit of cyan here which is from the background and cyan is good for the background because that is a contrasty color or a complementary complementary color as it's called in the professional world to the skin tone so as you can see here here are the skin tones and on the opposite side there's cyan so that's a nice separation from skin tones also have a bit of green here that's from the tree obviously and now I want to create a nice color contrast here and that's why I pulled the hue of this purple bluish pullover up so that it makes a pullover more cyan or teal looking as it's usually referred to and that's how I easily achieve this nice orange and teal separation here in the subject which are without looking bad like if you apply many orange and teal LUTs it just looks a bit fake it doesn't really come natural but here as you can tell it actually looks pretty good I leave the greens here because well the greens are not that strong I actually desaturated them a little bit but we will come now to that so here's the next step hue versus saturation curves as you can see here I this these are the skin tones like in the orange part so I increase the saturation of her skin tones a little bit and I generated saturation contrast by desaturating the rest of the image. Like as you can see here in the blue and green parts of the image, I desaturated that. So if I undo that you can see that the background is a lot more saturated and when I adjust, uh, when I apply this curve again, then you can see the background is more desaturated and that's why it separates more from her skin color. Let's do that again. So that's everything pretty saturated and now the background is more desaturated and therefore your attention goes directly more to the skin. And that's what you want to think about when you do cinematic or professional color grading. Where should the attention of the viewer should go to and then ask yourself how can you separate that a bit from the rest of the image. So that's basically what I did here. Just getting all the attention to her face. And you also see that I did some adjustments here in the hue versus luma curve. So here I pulled the blue or the background colors of the image or the video a bit down so that that gets a bit darker when you see before the background is pretty bright so that distracts also a bit from the face and by making that a bit darker also your attention goes more on the face so these are all just subtle changes here I didn't go too crazy because especially in the luminance levels here if I would go too low as you can see now yeah it separates now but it looks pretty bad actually it doesn't come natural anymore so you only want to do slight adjustments here otherwise it gets crazy and that doesn't come natural so definitely be a bit careful by doing so 
And let me also quickly show you how you can easily do these adjustments here. So let's say here in the U versus saturation curves, you want to get the skin tones. Then what you can simply do here is you go to this pipette tool. You also have that in Adobe Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, etc. So the tools are pretty much the same everywhere. So you get you use this pipette tool on her face and there it directly marks her skin tones. So here I can just simply drag that up a bit to increase the saturation. And then in this case, I, I wanna get rid of that point here because I don't really need it for this color grade. And I just use this point here to bring the rest of the image down in the blues. As you can see, we have the same effect as before. Desaturated background, maybe a little bit more saturation not to go too crazy here. And you see that looks pretty good so actually like if you don't really know where to click on this curves just use this pipette tool and drag it somewhere in the image to make sure that you you affect the range of color in the image that you want to affect and then as a last effect what i also did here is i adjusted the midtones a bit further because i just want to intensify that image a bit more it looked a bit too bright before but that's nothing major here and let's come to the next clip that's of my friend Robbie and when I do my basic color correction here, like increasing saturation, getting the shadows, midtones, highlights right, and applying a bit contrast here by applying an S curve, you see that the bush here in the foreground with the green tones is actually pretty distracting from Robbie. So what I simply did here is basically the same as we discussed in the clip before. Like here, I desaturated the greens quite a bit. I increased the saturation from his skin tones. And I also like changed the hue of his skin tones a little bit because they were a bit reddish before. So I, I wanted to have them a bit more yellow. Actually here, when you look in the vector scope, you see that this is the skin tone indicator line. Like skin tones doesn't matter if you're black or white, they are, are always on this line. So by bringing the skin tones either perfectly on this line or at least slightly around it that ensures that your skin tones look good and that's what I did here with the U versus U curve then saturation we had that already like that makes a huge effect alone when you see that here when I deactivate this U versus saturation curve then it looks pretty bad but now it actually looks pretty good the attention goes on his face and the bush doesn't distract anymore so much so that's great and then what I also did here is I pulled the luminance levels of the bush down a bit as you can see here the bush is now pretty bright and when I activate that again the bush gets a bit darker I didn't do too much here because I don't want it to look unrealistic like let's just pull it down a bit more I could do it. it, it still looks okay, but I think it's a bit too much. If I keep it like that, then it adds a bit more to the image because of that white background. What I then also did here, what's a bit different from the other clip that we had before, is I added a bit of blue in the highlights with the color wheels. So usually for all these effects, I use the U versus saturation curves, but here in the color wheels, I can bring more blues into the highlights as you can see here like before the background is pretty just normal white a little bit of blue here but by pushing a bit more blue in the highlights i make this background here a bit more bluish and then you see again that we have a nice separation between his skin tones and the background because his skin tones are quite orange and blue or teal or whatever is the opposite of orange or warm colors so we, you have warm colors and you have cold colors and that creates a nice contrast in color so that's the first tip creating more contrast in luminance in saturation and in color and now i have a gopro shot here where i want to give you some more tips so that's the shot straight out of camera looks okay but you can definitely make it better and my first tip here for this shot or the second tip overall is to create a bit nicer shadow roll off so you can see here that actually when you look in the bushes the shadows here they get black pretty abrupt and that doesn't really look beautiful or cinematic so you you can kind of fake a nice roll off in the shadows by smoothing that out by using color curves so what i did here is let's apply this curve here now when i apply this curve you see that the shadows look a lot flatter so let's do before there it's black and goes pretty abrupt from green to black so that's not a nice roll off and what I did here is I lifted the very shadows a bit 
and I also brought the lower midtones, the very dark midtones, a bit down to basically compress the shadow areas. And that gives the impression of a nicer roll off, even if it actually isn't. And what I did then, because it looks kind of flat in the shadows now, so it's, it's not really contrasty anymore, I brought down the shadows again. So when you look here in the color wheels, there are the shadows. I brought them just slightly down, just a little bit. I could actually do a little bit more, but I don't want to do too much here because crushing the shadows too much, much doesn't look good if you do this effect. But now, as you can see, just before and after, just from these two effects, right now the shadows look really crushed. It's, it's not really beautiful, but when I apply this effect, it, it looks a lot smoother. So that makes it look more cinematic, in my opinion. Uh, what you could also do is if you want to have brighter shadows you could adjust the curve here a bit more so that you don't only affect the darkest shadows but it already starts flattening out here a bit higher so now you can see it doesn't darken the shadows anymore so much so it looks a bit less crushed and as you can tell that definitely looks a lot better than before and let's also come to the third tip which i also do at this clip here and that's here for example i got a sun flare here and the sun flare made that the shadows here have a bluish tint which doesn't really look beautiful i mean it is okay because it is a sun flare in that case but oftentimes in your footage especially if you didn't set your white balance correct and so on then you oftentimes have a tint in the shadows and you can also see that here in the rgb parade that when i turn that on you see that here in the middle of the blue, it actually moves up and down. So that means that when I turn that off, you see here in the green that here is the slight U or whatever you want to call it here, this edge and in the, in the reds and the greens, but it's not in the blue area. So when I activate that, you see the same happening here in the blue area as in the green, green and red area. And as you can tell here in the image, now this bluish tint that you see now when I turn it off is gone. So what I did here is I got into the U versus saturation curves again. And then as you see here in the Luma versus saturation, I simply set a point here and at the end I brought it down completely. So you can do that by simply setting a point here dragging the shadows down like this is the darkest areas of your your video and by doing that you pretty much take all saturation away in the shadows and as usually the shadows should be desaturated that's also a good way actually to do and it, it's kind of a hack like it's not really the most professional way of color grading but that's a quick and easy way to get rid of color tints in the shadows so the thing that you should do now is to simply go on your computer grab a clip where you want to apply this techniques and then directly do it because just watching this tutorial does not make you better at color grading you have to actually do it to really learn what i'm talking about here so go on your computer now and do it by yourself keep the video open and just scroll to the parts of the video where the current affected or color grade that you want to apply is and try it out by yourself that's the best way to learn it just do things instead of just watching youtube videos all day so do it now but before you do that definitely hit the subscribe and the bell notifications button for upcoming tutorials like that i publish at least one video every week sometimes even two so see you in the next one